All right, guys, this is our uh, our pick and roll defense. Everybody runs screen and roll, so we have different ways of defending it, the pick and roll. And there's, you know, seven ways to do it. There's all kinds of different ways, uh, you know, switching it, going under it, going over it, show and recover, soft hedge, hard hedge, ice, double. There's, there's a billion, you know, a, a ton of ways to do it. I like, uh, depending on who the defender is, I, I like to, or defending, depending on who the offensive player is, I like to, uh, to double it. You know, we could call that fire. We can call it blitz. Um, and I also like the hard hedge. Uh, it depends on who the guy is coming off the screen, if he's effective or not. If he's not a shooter, we'll go under it. But, uh, Generally speaking, you got the ball handler here. If he sets the screen and he's coming off, what I want is the, the, the guy guarding the screener has to be attached. And what that means to us is that you can touch the man. I don't want this guy guarding the screener way back in here. So when that screen is set, I want a hard hedge. Forcing this guy coming off the screen to dribble backwards or towards the sideline. So that's the key for everything. Is Well, the key to everything is that the guy guarding the ball doesn't get screened and slides over the top of it and can't be screened. That, that, that's, that makes the screen null and void. That makes everything else easy. So the first thing I'd like to do is fight over the top of that screen. If I have a great defender here, they can fight over the top of that screen. That, that makes everything great. That's why it's so valuable to have a great on-ball defender that can do that. Because I'm looking for uh, someone that's hard to screen. That, that would be a phenomenal defender. So let's say the screen was set and it's a good screen and he's coming off. Now the defender here steps out and hard hedges. This guy trails it, makes this guy go that way. This guy's going to roll. Let's say we have a shooter in the corner. Okay. And let's say we have another guy here at the wing for whatever reason. Maybe he was the second guy on a horn set or something. Well, what we do is on that hard hedge, if he's going this way, we want the weak side defender here to come all the way over and take that away. We do not leave the strong side shooter. Now, this guy here has to be wary of... The, the guy coming over the top and then him just swinging it back to a wide open three. So he's got to make a read depending on what this guy does. But we're not going to allow him to turn that corner and look for options. So we're going to force that hard hedge out. Now, once he does, it depends. We can either fire or blitz, and that would mean double it and stay on that and double it. Or once the, once the ball handler starts to retreat, the big guy who stepped out on that hedge can now recover to his big, and then everybody goes back to where they were. So it's the weak side defender that has to come all the way over. So we got a shooter here. We're going to stay attached. Okay, we'll just do this. We'll go the other way so we can get some flexibility. Let's say it was a horn screen set, and this guy comes off. So now this guy's going to hard hedge and force him that way. Let's say this guy popped to here. So that's where his defender is. So, this is the ball handler, we have the hard hedge, we have the trailing, the guy who was guarding him, and we double it. This guy now rolls to the basket after that screen. This guy has to come all the way over. Because he was going that way, making this the weak side. This guy stays, he's not allowing that to be an option. That's not an option. Now, if this guy was able to throw it to that high post guy, maybe the guy coming over on this was too low. We want him high so that that lob pass can't be made to the big. So we don't want him just rotating over and standing behind him. We want him to be higher. If that pass was made, now this guy's going to be open for the dive. It is this guy that has to rotate down. We're, we're, we're now opening up and leaving this open, but... This guy doesn't rotate down and, and until the pass is in midair heading to the high post or heading to the roll. Then he sprints down and takes away that backdoor lob. But again, that's going to be a difficult pass to throw if you've got a really good hard hedge and a trailing defender. That's going to have to be a lob, which will allow us the time to recover. 
So weak side defender has to come all the way high. Weak side high defender has to rotate down. Strong side does not leave. And I'm going to show some examples of of this in a, in a game that I saw recently. So hold on. Okay, so we'll see here. This is uh, Loyola Chicago um, against Illinois in the tournament. Now, not everybody runs everything the same, and especially at a high level, you got to make reads and adjustments and, and see, you know, uh, depending on the personnel, what you're going to do. But what you'll see here is the big man setting the screen, and now this guy who's not very good usually in pick-and-roll defense, he's going to hard hedge, and he's going to stay there. And now you can see the way the concept is, and this guy's got to stay attached to this. They don't want to leave him open on the shot. I would like him to be even more attached, uh, to be right about there. The weak side defender has to come over and take this big man, which is not easy. This was the other wing that stayed high that you have to deny because that would be a quick reversal. So now the key is, can these two guys do a good enough job at hard hedging and maintaining that blitz to where that pass cannot be made into the big man? This little guy has got to maintain this hold long enough if this guy retreat dribbles to let the big recover. And we'll let it play out. So you can see the mismatch here. Can they get it there quick enough? And the big recovers. And then you can see that now the pick and roll has not worked. The clock has ticked down. You can see the weak side defender right here, who I liked a lot. And I watched him a majority of this game. I keep the game. I have it on DVR. But this guy was very active. He's talking a lot. He's moving back and forth. Um, he's very active. But you know, I want you to watch the play again. And you'll usually see him kind of directing everybody and where they're supposed to go. So now all of a sudden there's 10 seconds on the shot clock and they're forced to take a shot they normally wouldn't want. You have a good box out and you get the, you get the stop. Um, again, looking at, I, I really want you to see the activity that this guy would have normally and how he leads and reminds people where they're supposed to go. He did it all game long. I don't know if he does it, on the, but he'll do it all game long. Let's go all the way back to the beginning of the set. And now watch the weak side. He comes off of this. Okay, now watch the weak side defender. He's got to come all the way over. And everybody's active and moving and doing their job. Let me look at another set now. Now you can see on this set, it doesn't work well because the big man on the hard hedge, he doesn't force the ball handler to retreat dribble or get out and allows that lob into the post. Now you can see the rotation is still the same. The smaller guy is coming over to take away the roll. But what you don't see on this one is right here. He did not force this action and he left open a passing lane to get it inside and they have to foul. This guy stays attached. But if he was higher, like he was on the previous demonstration or, or video I sent. This pass doesn't happen. But because he gave space, this space allows for this pass to be made. If we're going to hard hedge or blitz it or ice, whatever, we're, not ice, blitz or, or fire, you cannot give that guy that lane. Then you're forced to foul. So you cannot give the ball handler space. You have to maintain that, that action. Okay, hold on. Okay, again, here you could see the hard hedge. Uh, they take away the initial. This is a little bit of a different twist to it because what they did here on the offensive end was they gave this guy two options. He's coming this way, so we have an initial kick here, and then they have another shooter in the corner here. Hold on. So again, we're going to stay attached here. And then we would have this guy having to close out here. This guy should be the one rotating. But the key to this is the hard hedge. This time he does a good job on the hard hedge. And he gets a bit of a deflection. And there's a deflection. 
and you can see the initial kick was taken away. Dive, jump ball, goes to Illinois Chicago. But it's all about the hard hedge, and there's the tap away. So because he hard hedged better and didn't give the guard any kind of space, it really takes him out of everything, and, and there's really no real passing lanes available to him. I think he was trying to throw that to the deep corner guy lifting or throwing it into the big man, but we got help here. Uh, it, it, it was a very difficult play to make. Okay, another example of a good hard hedge, and this guy's typically not a great pick-and-roll defender, but another hard hedge forcing him sideways and a tap away. And you could see the rotation on the defensive end again. It's exactly what I would want. This corner, which you cannot see, is locked into that corner. The weak side defender came all the way over. It's this guy. He had to stay with the ball reversal. Now, that's obvious. That's an obvious mismatch. But the hedge is so hard that it's not easy to get that ball in there. So that's the challenge is I want this guy to be higher and not stand so far into the basket that it's just a roll and then he catch and lay it in. He's got to stay high to take away the lob. The hedge has to be aggressive to force a high lob. Take away the initial easy pass. And a great job on the defensive end, and it forces another slap away turnover off of, off of Illinois. And you can see the frustration of their point guard, who is a, a fantastic player. But again, it's another, you know, love tap, taps the ball out of bounds. And then you got the intensity afterwards, you know. So, because I think he was known as a guy that didn't defend pick and roll real well. And that must have been their philosophy to put him in pick and roll. And it didn't work out. On this one, you can see the mistake the guy makes on this set where he doesn't drop down. But look at the on-ball defender. Really making it hard for that screen to work. This is what I liked about this is the guy guarding the ball here. He is hard to screen. He, he, he fights through the top of that, fights through the top of that. Now you're going to have to run it with, you know, some other type of action, but it's taking time off the clock. This is just great scramble defense. And this is why I wanted to see this set. I just wanted you to see what a, what a guy who does not allow the screen to work, how it disrupts everything. He, the screen and roll, you don't need the hedge. You don't need the rotation now. The big can stay on the big because the guy did not get screened. The value of a great on-ball defender. Now, they had a little bit of an overplay on that help side. Um, but just great scramble defense, challenge the shot, and then you can't get the rebound. But the, the value of an on-ball defender there, that's why I wanted you to see that clip. This is the one where you'll see the weak side defender not dropping down, costing them a bucket but or a foul. But look at the activity on the back end on the defensive side. The two little guards that are commun right there communicating, pointing it out, getting it figured out, knowing what they're going to do. Uh, that's the key to this set right here is seeing that set constantly and looking at the back line. So what you'll see here is the back end. The back end uh, really does a good job of communicating. But on this roll, they get the ball here. This guy's going to dive. It's this man that has to rotate down, and he was slow doing it. And then we'll play it back for you so you can see it again from the beginning. But right there, you can see he was too high, and then it forced a foul. But I like the back end, the way the guards are communicating, the way they're talking. You know, you can see a lot of activity uh, right here. The guard right there pointing, letting him know that he knew it was coming. So now here it comes. Now, the uh, the, the high guard here, I think, just makes a lot of bad reads and, and they didn't do this a lot. They did a really good job most of the game. But this guy, his shooter is here. I think he's just too high. If he was a little bit lower, uh, he would be able to maintain that and then drop quicker. And then I think this guy lifts way high and he stays too high. And that forces that action. Uh, but you could see the hard hedge, the rotating off the weak side. Now the guy lifts way up and that forced the guard to come high. So once the ball was here, he she should be moving already, and he's too slow. I mean, he hasn't even reacted. Okay, and then that forces that action. So again, if you make a mistake, that's the kind of thing you'll see. 
on this set I, I really like uh, the the way this guard here communicates and I, I really want this from every player we have especially if you're smart and you're the leader but this guy he really communicates now on this set they, they again put a shooter up in this area and here and the scouting report said that he wanted him to stay more attached and it was this guy that they wanted to have rotate over so you'll see this guy communicate that and the play the diff defense works what they end up doing is they swing it to this guy in the corner and he's a good player and he just makes a one-on-one -on -one move it had nothing to do with the actual pick and roll but you'll see here look at the guard pointing he'll tell people where to go so when this guy comes up right there he's telling this guy that he's supposed to rotate over and he's screaming it out that you're supposed to be pointing right where he should be so now this guy comes over like he has been telling him to do and now that takes away that roll the hard heads took away the roll and now they just swing the ball to the corner, and he makes a good move. Gets him off his feet here on this little little bit of a dip on the shoulder, and then makes the bucket. Um, this is number one seed in Illinois. They, got, they ended up losing uh, to an eight seed. But again, I like looking at the guards' communication. Everybody's where they're supposed to be. Now, the scouting report said they're going to leave this guy open for whatever reason. The scout could have showed that they don't throw that pass very often. It could be this guy's not a great shooter. It could be that this guy stayed attached to the first initial pass. So I just wanted you to see that part of it. Okay, you'll see on this one that the hard hedge works. The guy retreat dribbles, and then the big recovers. So here's the hard hedge. You're gonna you're gonna double it, but now you retreat dribbles. So now look at the rotation again. Same rotation. The big though, because he backed all the way out, can now recover. And now it's just basic one-on-one -on -one offense and defense and good defense. So again, it shows that you're taking away the screen, you're taking away the point guard's ability to be effective off that screen, and you're taking away the role. So you're taking away this guard's ability to create. You're taking away the role, which is usually very vulnerable, and then you can recover because he retreat dribbled. On this one, let's see if we can hear the sound. The announcer talks about what they were doing defensively. And if you watch games, announcers can really coach you up. You'll be a much better player if you can listen to what the coaches are, or the announcers are saying because they're technically going to coach you. Let's see if we can get some sound on this. Hold on. Maybe not. So this is the last one I'll show you, but this is where the hard hedge does not do a good job and he splits the double. That's something you have to be very wary of, and this is a, a thing that can occur. This is the backup center. I believe he was a freshman, but he doesn't really close off. He gives too much space and allows this guy to slither in between. The rotation was great, ready for everything, but once he split that double, now you're in trouble. You can see that they, they did everything they were supposed to do. But the hedge wasn't good enough. The big man didn't shut it down quick enough. Uh, strong side shooter taken away. Weak side guy comes all the way over. This guy could stay attached to the lift. But when he splits that, now this guy's going to have to guard two. And he forces a really difficult shot. And he makes it. It's a difficult shot. But that's what happens if you don't hard hedge well. So, again, you know, this is something that... that I learned in my days working at the levels I've worked at. Um, it's kind of what they do in the NBA. It's pretty much a universal way of defending the pick and roll. Uh, and and I think that if you if you practice it enough and do it enough, then you can have other options. You can go under screens, which is easy. Over screens, you can ice. 
Uh, we'll go over that later where you take away the screen and you force him away from the screen. There, there's just different ways you can defend the pick and roll, but I think this is one that uh, Virginia uses quite often, and uh, I think it's a very effective tool if the, 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 the screener's defender is really good at hard hedging. It, it makes life easy. Obviously, I, I showed you what happens if the on-ball defender is hard to screen, but if you can get that screener's defender, the big if it's a big guy setting the screen to really be good at hard hedging and forcing that guy to retreat, it really allows your defense to, to dictate the, the tempo and, and really control the game. So uh, hopefully this helps and we'll be ready to play when it comes down to it. So we'll see you on the court.